What's up guys, Spinfire Arms here, and something that I do over here at the channel is, I try to read the comments, I try to respond and stuff like that, it doesn't always work out, but if you guys have a video idea or a request, or you see two firearms you want to see compared, let me know in the comments, I'll do my best, I'll screenshot it, and try to make it there, and make the video for you to do a comparison, because I like making those kinds of videos, and I think it's very helpful um, to people watching. But anyways, today we're going to be comparing the Diamondback DB9 Gen 4, this is a viewer requested video to the Ruger LCP Max, right? And I just want to start off by saying hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. Tell me your thoughts on pocket pistols, tell me what you carry today, what kind of holster, what kind of ammo, and let's get right into the video. As you can see, the pocket holsters I am using, because I know I'm going to get questions about it, I can't find many pocket holsters for the Diamondback DB9 Gen 4. There's a lot out there for the Gen 3s. It was, if Vetter made it for the Gen 4, I'd be carrying in a pocket locker holster, or pocket locker holster. That is my go-to, the Vetter pocket locker holsters. I've been trying to talk to them about getting one for the Gen 4s, but they haven't made it yet. So, I use the DeSantis Nemesis pocket holster. What I like is it's not flimsy, it keeps its shape, um, but yet, at the same time, it is a soft holster, which I'm not a big fan of, but it does not interfere with that trigger, and it cannot interfere with that trigger. It's just made too well. Shout out to DeSantis. They make awesome pocket holsters. And then for my Ruger LCP Max, what I've been carrying this in lately is my, my Hog Holster Stash Holster. Now, you wonder, why does it look like this? Well, that's a push-off tab, right? So when the firearm's in there, you just push it off into your pocket. And you see how that thing launches? It almost uses the retention as a way to pop it off. So like when it's leaving the retention, it flings that thing out of there, which I absolutely love. You know you're going to have no problem getting this holster off. And once again, that's made by Hog Holsters. Code SPN for 10% off to get one. They're super thin, very easy to not print with, and just a great overall choice for pocket carry. Now let's get into the firearms themselves because that's why you guys are here. As you can see, I love the stainless steel or tungsten look the most on firearms. That's why you see the Beretta like that. You see the Ruger like that. You see the, um, what do you call it, PSA dagger like that. You see my Smith & Wesson m p 40 compact that I'm carrying like that. That is my favorite color combo. And I think that's a great way to go for pocket carry, whether it's Cerakoted or just like a stainless steel slide, because of rust. You don't want to have rust issues, which Ruger is well known for having rust issues on their pocket pistols. The Diamondback DB9 Gen 4 is a 6 plus 1 setup. You can get the flush mag or the little pinky extension. Both are just 6 plus 1. But the difference is it's in 9mm and obviously plus P rated. The Ruger LCP Max is a 10 plus 1 or 12 plus 1 with the longer mag setup but of 380. Now that's why this makes it a very interesting comparison because a lot of people don't want to carry a 380. And I get it. If you live in a cold area like I do, in the winter, people are going to have four or five layers on and a Carhartt coat and a duck coat. They may have overalls on, bibs, snow pants. So if you ever get in a self-defense encounter, you want something that you know is going to you know, penetrate the way it needs to. Um, and sometimes out of a short barrel 380, that can be hard. Um, unless you're using the right ammo. That's why I prefer Extreme Defenders in 380 from Underwood. They're the way to go. But this right here is 9mm out of a 3.1 inch barrel, I believe, or a 3 inch barrel. And you're not going to have an issue um, with penetration with the 9mm in most cases. Once again, run good defensive ammo through these and you'll be fine. But the DB9 Gen 4, like I said, 6 plus 1. It is thick this way, right? Let's compare size real quick. Look at that. That's overall footprint. So very comparable in size. But with obviously the um no, actually they're pretty similar i would say the ruger max is thicker in the grip but they're about even when it comes to the slides and then overall slide length and barrel length you can see from the top it's going to be shorter the ruger is going to be shorter right and also i would say when it comes down to the feel i feel like the ruger almost feels fake and like a toy whereas the diamondback does feel a little better built in my opinion but i could be wrong the Diamondback is a metal trigger, which I actually really like. It's a little heavy, but very crisp, very defined, not a bad um, trigger at all. So we'll empty it real quick. It is clear. I mean, it's so crisp and it's such a great shooting trigger. Now, a long reset. Once again, this is a pocket pistol, but it's very fast. You can let that out because that trigger springs forward right away. And you can, you know, shoot to reset very easily. It comes with forward serrations that are great, rear serrations. I think the firearm itself looks absolutely awesome. Um, Ergonomics-wise, for being so thin and small, they did a great job. They made it wider, and it fits in your palm swell really well. You can get two and a half fingers on it with that pinky extension. 
Um, the beaver tail is great as well, prevents you from getting a slide bite. Um, and it also takes Glock sights. The number one complaint I've seen about these Diamondbacks is that this rear slide moves around or flies out the fire. Nothing a little Loctite cannot fix. And like I said, it takes Glock sights, so you have unlimited sight options. Now, these aren't glow in the dark or tritium, but they are three dots with a U notch rear. Good overall sights. If you watch my video of me shooting this winter with this Diamondback, and people always say, oh, I never see shooting videos. Guys, I have hundreds, if not thousands, of shooting videos up on my channel. You just got to look for them. But the shooting this Diamondback was absolutely amazing. You realize you can shoot it fast and very accurate, even from 30, 40 feet away. You have no problems with this thing. And that's what these are for. These are backup firearms meant to defend yourself. Now, last video I did was a 500 round review. I'm probably up at 700 rounds now, which is actually hard because you only have six rounds, right? So it's a lot of magazines you're reloading. But this thing has not given me one problem, not one issue, has ran every kind of defensive ammo through it, has ran every ball ammo through it, not a single hiccup. And I haven't been taking care of it with maintenance the way I should, but it runs great. Now, it takes down just like a Glock. Um, it's very snag free and just a great overall firearm. And you're still getting the power of 9mm and 7 rounds of 9mm is probably enough to get you out of 90% of self-defense encounters. So it's a great way to go. Something I really like about the Diamondback is as a backup. You know you're having that 9mm power. You can still get a good grip on it. Um, the one complaint I would say is it is so thin, your finger protrudes to this side. So if your grip is like mine, you don't want your finger to get caught up on your support hand. So you just got to alter the way you shoot a little bit. Um, but it is what it is. That's, that's how you adjust the different firearms in different situations and so on. The Ruger LCP Max is unbelievable. The capacity for its size is insane. So shout out the Ruger. On top of that, I would say the ergonomics aren't as good as the Diamondback, but for being so small, pretty darn good. The texturing is good. Um, I'd say the texturing is not as good as the Diamondback, but it's still pretty good. Um, overall slide finish, I would say is good. I like it so far. The sights definitely go to the Ruger LCP Max because you get a U-notch rear and they're textured. But then you also get a tritium night sight in the front. So that's awesome. You get night sights right out of the box. But these do not take Glock sights. So um, you may have a little bit limited options when it comes to sights. But you don't even need to change them out. It's a pocket pistol. It's an up close and personal. It's a get off me gun. You're rarely ever going to be using sights. But the main thing about this firearm I love the most is capacity. Like I said, 10 rounds in that setup. So 11 rounds in your pockets. Unbelievable. But you hear that? You got a lot of slide rattle. And the trigger is great, right? You hit a very, very defined wall. Great, I mean, great trigger for a pocket pistol. Unbelievable. You have a longer reset like all these pocket pistols do. But it's such a crisp, crisp trigger. Very defined, very audible. But once again, the firearm feels a little fake and I don't like that rattle. Um, but once again, haven't had any issues with it. No reliability issue. Shoots everything so far. And I use Extreme Penetrators, um, the hollow point version, not the solid projectile, from Underwood out of this thing. And it runs them really well. Um, good serrations on it, both rear and the front. Obviously, no rail. No one's going to be putting a light on such a small firearm, even though you could, considering the capacity on this. Good trigger. Just good overall pistol. I do think, when it comes down to it, I do prefer the Diamondback. I'm just being honest. I like the way the Diamondback shoots how fast it is, how little recoil, and for being 9mm out of such a small firearm, I really like that about that. And to be honest, I would take 7 rounds of 9 over 11 rounds of 380, in just my opinion. Do I carry the LCP Max? Of course I do. I love it still. I carry a lot of different firearms. Just depends on feeling, stuff like that. This is a great way to have deep concealment in certain areas and having no chance of printing. If you throw that 12 round mag in there and throw it in your pocket in a Vetter pocket locker holster or a hog holster stash holster, I mean... You're going to have such a small setup with so much capacity. 13 rounds in this tiny of a firearm is unbelievable. So you just can't, you know, you can't beat the capacity of the LCP Max. Um, but I do like 9mm a little bit better, and I just like the way the Diamondback shoots. But both are great firearms. You can unload this mag in two, two and a half seconds to completion and be accurate. Both are great firearms. Both great get-off-me guns, pocket pistols, whatever you want to call them. But... I do give it to the Diamondback in my opinion because I haven't had any, any issues with it. And once again, price, the LCP Max you can find 350 to 400. Um, the Diamondback DB9 Gen 4 you can find anywhere from like 230 to 280, right? Um, so great overall firearm. I love this thing. 
Um, I do see a lot of people hate on it, but if you saw how much I enjoyed shooting it in the winter, it would probably change your mind a little bit because these are a blast to shoot. People always get nervous or scared of small firearms, think they're going to be too snappy, uncontrollable. If you really work on your technique and actually put rounds through it, you realize it, it's it's about training. It's about how you hold your firearm and how you handle the recoil and stuff like that. So stuff like this, shooting small things can really help you transition into shooting larger firearms better. So I absolutely love my pocket pistols. Um, two great options. Honestly, I tell people flip a coin. This one has capacity and a great trigger in night sights. This has nine millimeter in such a small concealable package. One of the smallest nine millimeter pocket pistols, a great trigger and great shootability. So can't argue with either of them. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.